I already have a fairly sizable vintage camera collection, if you can really call it that. This is a Kodak DC280 zoom, which used to be my primary camera, 2 megapixels. And this is an American Online Photo Cam, also known as the Pre-Tech DC600. You'll see some pictures, first from the Kodak, and then from the America Online, right now. So obviously, as you can guess, between those two cameras and also the Pentax Optio E40, I really don't need a digital camera at all. And yet, I picked up these two. From the video title, you'll know what they are, but we'll go ahead and we'll get them out of their pouches, which did cost extra. So this one right here is a Kodak DX3500 digital camera. I believe these were also branded under the Easy Share name. And this one over here is, yep, you guessed it, a Kodak DX3600 Zoom digital camera. Now there's really nothing special about either one of these cameras other than the fact that they are overwhelmingly low-end. Kodak's mantra for these, as I remember it, went something along the lines of you push a button, we do the rest. And they're not kidding. Look at the controls on these things. Nothing on the front of this one. There's a power switch on the front of this one, and that's it. On the top, you get a very basic mode wheel, taking pictures, reviewing pictures, and settings on the DX3500. The DX3600 adds video capability, so you get your little microphone there, and no other modes. You get a shutter button there, and that's pretty much it for that. The power switch for this one is on the side. You can see this little switch here. That's a close-up mode, and on the back, that's it. No, really. You get zoom on this one, but not on this one. And other than that, the controls are exactly the same. In fact, the camera bodies are exactly the same otherwise. So we'll talk about the controls that you do get, starting with this, the DX3500. This one actually required a little bit of TLC in order to get it working because it came with this little rechargeable battery pack, which is predictably completely dead and leaked all over the place. So let's go ahead and turn this camera on by flicking the power switch here. We'll see it's got a lens cap there and really not a whole lot else. In fact, I thought it was kind of broken at first because I thought there was supposed to be glass over that. And maybe there is, or a piece of plastic or whatever. But it doesn't seem to be too bad. Flip it back. You get display brightness. Set the uh, date and time, video output, your language, image storage. This thing has 8 megabytes of onboard storage and also can be expanded with a CF card. I'm not even sure they were sold with CF cards, to be honest with you. Something this basic, I'd really be surprised. About and format, and that's it. So there's the firmware version on this, the DX3500. So if we get out of that, that's it. There are no, other than the display brightness, there's really no controls in there. Let's go to photo taking mode. The display will shut off here in a second as a way to preserve battery power. We'll go into the menu. It's got a self timer. You can change the quality. You can change where it's stored. Again, either auto or automatically to the onboard storage. You can change the date overlay, quick view, which I believe that's review after you take the picture, and that's it. No manual exposure, no manual white balance, nothing. Seriously, really basic camera. The controls are pretty well identical between the DX3500 and DX3600, which is this, so I'm not really going to show a whole lot, but I will go ahead and show you reading internal memory. I think this one has a slightly darker display on it. But again, we get a pretty similar deal here. This one's also running newer firmware. 
So go into review. There shouldn't be any pictures on this one because I use the CF card to record. And again, you get pretty much the same deal here. Although it does not have, like this one did, it doesn't have any real button on it for enabling the close-up mode. So you get an option here in the menu. Other than that, the menu is exactly the same. Maybe organized a little bit differently, but you get the same options. And of course, you get a video mode, which is not limited other than by the size of the storage space. So just how bad are these things? I mean, let's get real here. The copyright date on the manual for the DX3500 says 2001. So these are early point-and-shoot digital cameras. And I mean, like, look at the lens, especially on the DX3500. Look at that. You know, a camera is only as good as the lens you put in front of it. So these things must take absolutely positively terrible video quality. I mean, this one might be better, but probably not by much. Well, I'm just going to go ahead and show you the sample pictures and let them speak for itself. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. First, from the DX3500. Now from the DX3600. And now for some sample video clips. Uh, obviously, I will not be sharing any from the 3500 since it does not take video. Predictably, since the camera is from 2001 or thereabouts, the video quality is rather mediocre and the audio quality is even worse than that. Okay, it appears to be recording. I don't know if it's recording audio or not. I don't believe you get refocusing while it's recording. Doesn't look like it. There's no zoom or anything like that. It's just the facts, ma'am. There's a close up mode, but you can't really see much. This thing is not very good. Even in what I would consider to be fairly decent lighting. Can't turn off close up mode while you're recording either. Here's with close up mode turned off. There you go. Here's some test video with some more natural lighting. Too bad we don't get any zoom on this. Trying to get a little closer with this one. Like I said, I don't believe you refocus or it refocuses when it's recording, which is on par with a lot of digital cameras, even some more modern ones. Here's another look at the close up mode. an example of refocusing. But aside from the video, you know, these things take pretty decent pictures. In fact, I'd say they almost take better pictures. Not so much resolution-wise, but certainly quality, clarity, and color-wise than that Pentax Optio E40, which is several years newer than these. So I was under the impression that I was just going to end up making this video and then end up returning these, but I may actually keep both of them because they are pretty good cameras. Now, let's not kid ourselves. They're not DSLRs, and they're not very high-end cameras, and they don't take 
superb pictures. But for what I do with digital cameras, they are more than good enough. And that is going to do it for this video. Thank you for watching. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below. And this is CP666 signing off, and I hope to see you next time. Till then. Choose be my primary camera. I swear to God, every time I shoot a frickin' video, that stupid phone has got to go off. A Kodak DC3600. Oh, sorry. We go to review, of course, there are no pictures on the... Oh, well, I stand corrected. There are a couple pictures on this camera.